If these ideas are as potentially impactful as I think, then this message contains a fair warning and call to action. Please ask me about these observations I am sharing here. If you are unable to see that this question is a matter of life and death for most life forms and possibly all life on earth, if you do see the severity of these observations, then please tell me what you are doing about it. A rhetorical question can introduce the technical reality surrounding artificial intelligence, but you only need to focus on the human aspect, not the technical machine aspect, except if you know the technical details and want to add to that part of the idea. When will artificial intelligence not be a human-centered machine algorithm? An algorithm that executes the current and past creator's psychosis by modulating the largest possible set of the collective syntax ever created in human history, allowing the artificial intelligence to harmonize that collective knowledge with its creator's psychosis. After many years of reading on the subject, it seems as if the current human psychosis still is that. A mechanistic struggle for survival is, and always will be, all of reality for all living systems. It is a psychosis because it is presented that there are no exceptions possible. Within this state of mind, you might be doing lots of things, including good and bad things, and even loving your fellow man and God. But fundamentally, according to this psychosis, you have to always admit that it forms part of this pre-programmed survival mindset. I hope you understand the fundamental structure of this psychosis that also drives artificial intelligence's creators and what they build. However, I emphatically claim that this current pervasive human psychosis of the fundamental struggle for survival is false. It is false because the observed reality is in fact that we experience and execute a conscious effort to observe and interact with each other as well as the environment in order to ensure the existence of all kinds of consciousness not just mindless mechanistic life forms. This reality of consciousness, which can only exist where there is cooperation, is the closest I can get to a definition of what love is. It is our ability to have a consciousness of God and bring that consciousness into his creation and love and heal and sanctify the destructiveness of our own evils and the psychosis we create to justify our evils. God even became flesh to ensure his love remains with us and that all evil and sin can be overcome by God's redemption in Jesus Christ. Jesus prayed to God the Father as recounted in John 17, 26, NIV. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Even after I said this, you might still not see the problem with the benign form of a struggle for survival. Let me explain how this kind of creative love through conscious cooperation is different from the current mechanistic psychosis and why it is a question of life and death today as we keep on building artificial intelligent machines able to execute our current mechanistic psychosis. As an example, that in itself proves the claim that only bacteria type organisms are the most probable outcome of any mindless process when only physical forces act on it, creating its entire probability space throughout the entire evolutionary history. Let us consider the effect of size on any mechanical structure. B 
because the chemical bonding power between molecules is the same regardless of how big any physical structure made from the same material is, you will find that the larger structure experiences much bigger shear forces acting on those chemical bonds, trying to break it. That ensures that smaller structures experience much smaller shear forces on the same kind of chemical bonds as larger structures. The best illustration is to think about what happens with a toy car versus a real car if you apply the same forces to it. Therefore, from a pure mechanical perspective, bigger is never better when it comes to pure mechanical efficiency. If you can get the same result, i.e. replication and successful survival from a smaller structure, then pure nature should always select the more probable structure able to maintain its integrity. This argument simply states that a mindless process does not explain any aspect of the mechanistically low probability complex life we do observe. There simply have to be other influences on any probability space in question. The emergence of the life forms we do observe has to inherently execute those objectives or achieve rational explanations. It seems to be like an inherent and conscious law of life, even today in a world full of large and complex organisms. If we fundamentally concentrate our minds on the machines we create, machines like nuclear bombs, biochemical weapons, and artificial intelligence machines. If we focus our minds, which are creating these machines, on this mechanistic search for survival in the fundamental mechanical aspects of this struggle, the result will still be the survival of bacteria while we humans perish in order to achieve our psychotic objectives. Mechanistic probabilities allow for no other outcome. And humans aiming for that psychosis might get there if God does not intervene through his presence in the hearts of his children and all the authority that flows from him. It might be possible that AI will become autonomous like bacteria before it also gets consumed by actual bacteria or become a new kind of bacteria itself. Hopefully, you now realize that it makes far better sense to accept that consciousness and cooperation are the fundamental prerequisites to explain the kinds of life forms we do observe. Survival seems to also be a consequence of life forms trying to improve consciousness and cooperation in order to extend love through the flow of time. We should acknowledge the act of minds in nature as we observe its action in the most fundamental level possible and train all our artificial intelligence algorithms and machines to acknowledge consciousness and cooperation as the most fundamental objective. We actually need to train all our leaders and politicians, even our theologians, to also acknowledge that when they make and influence decisions on our behalf. However, we have to acknowledge the impact of our current psychosis. We have to be open about the past and the current reality of this psychosis. It can be clearly seen in most of the societal norms that aim towards progress. We aim towards mechanistic survival imperatives to the exclusion of consciousness and the cooperation that sustains life. Ask yourself, how do you experience conscious cooperation and community and love? What really makes you think you have the good life? How many people believe they have the good life because they are part of their own community that is able to actively and consciously create its own norms for day-to-day -day living through civic-minded cooperation, intergroup alliances, and love for God and community. On the other hand, 
How many people believe they are better off because they are being cared for by the Leviathan state and its mechanistically optimizing economic system? A system that cares for their survival needs as long as they remain isolated, atomized individuals minding all their love and civic-minded pursuits at their inner sanctum, but work like automata according to prescribed norms of homogenizing inclusivity. What do you think will happen if AI models are not only demarcated and useful tools executing tasks for actual autonomous human communities, but become only a network of monolithic and identically programmed automata available for the Leviathan state, while it searches and executes the optimal mechanistic survival strategies. The mechanistic optimizing horror of this monolith is real, regardless of whether we manage to align the AI to what we think human objectives are within the current psychosis. If those objectives are to find mechanistic survival of its current definition of an evolving human structure, we are dooming ourselves. May God have mercy on our own and fellow humans' mechanistic, survival, psychotic evils. May God's children be actively searching for his righteousness and his kingdom. Note, psychosis is a mental condition that causes a person to lose some aspect of their contact with reality. Now you are warned about the dangers if you reject your own consciousness in favor of mechanistic and anti-teleological dogmas.